This is the best rushing offense in Madden 23. Psych! It has explosive run plays all over the field. Run. And it won't play touchdown for every defense in the game. Break yourself, fool! So if you want to see what offense I'm using to get results like this, stick around after the intro. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable butt coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. In today's gameplay, I want to be using plays out of my New Orleans Saints offense and multi D defensive ebooks. As these are the two playbooks that I've used most of the year. But before I get into the video, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like Woo! this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. It really helps out the channel, and I appreciate all the support. Other than that, if you guys want to see more money plays from these or any of my ebooks, all you have to do is click the links in the description or the top end comment. You can have them sent to your email for instant download. The formation is a single back wing stack, which might look familiar if you followed this channel for a while, since it was one of my favorite formations to use back in Madden 22 as I made several videos about it. The only personnel adjustment you're going to want to make is to put your fastest or best playmaker receiver at this spot here as this is going to be one of the most used spots on run and pass plays. So for me, I'm going to put Quez Watkins here since he has a 98 speed. For my four play audibles to set up this offense, the first play you can either leave the flanker spot or you can replace it with the smash play as both are good cover three concepts and one play touchdown options versus cover two and cover three. I also leave the halfback weak zone alone as it's the only inside run play that I will use. Then the third play I will replace with the jet sweep as this is the big play against any man coverage as well as cover three and cover four defenses because the cornerbacks drop back post snap making them weaker in run support to start the play. And then the last play is the PA fork which is a one play touchdown against just about every single defense in the game with different setups. The fifth play that I will choose is probably the most important and might be the most used which is why I call this as my active play every single time and that is the halfback stretch. The first advantage comes from the quarterback wall up animation. This animation provides one advantage to the offensive player and that is the ability to make one adjustment while the quarterback is walking up to the line of scrimmage that your opponent won't be able to see. As the best way to run this stretch play in my opinion is to flip it with the right stick whether running against man or zone. Since the receivers are wider than the tight ends that will usually help to seal the edge when it comes to blocking against zone coverage and against man coverage the receivers will pull the cornerbacks back by running fake routes which tight ends can't do. There are several reads to make when it comes to choosing which of the three run plays you should run on any given play but the easiest read to make is look at the defensive front if they are spread wide like this it's best to switch over to the halfback zone weak as you should at the very least be able to get through that first level to the linebackers so since my opponent didn't pinch the defense or close up those gaps that is exactly what i do i also noticed that my opponent walks the safety down as his user though which prompts me to make my next adjustment as this formation has several motion options that can also give you an advantage as well and since the safety in the box is not accounted for i am now one block or short so I'm going to motion over one of the tight ends to even out the formation and now I also have a better chance of picking up the user safety at the next level. Unfortunately though I accidentally ran into a blitz which slowed me down by catching me in the backfield but I was still able to win the tackle battle as the blocks held up long enough for me to still get five yards that I was hoping for. When I get back to the huddle I see that he was in fact in cover three blitz so on the next play when I read that he is still in cover three I have several options. So I could just run the stretch play and flip it behind the receivers but when I see him using the same weak side safety I decide Decide to switch over to the jet sweep. I already mentioned that cover three and cover four cornerbacks are programmed to drop back as deep as possible post snap. You also want to make sure that you're running this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, which I already have in place. The last read is always the user, which I know is too far away from where I am going to be able to make an impact on the play. When I start the play, he does react to the motion, but like I said, it's too little too late. As not a lot of players can catch a 98 speed receiver from behind as we get a 17 yard run on second down. One of the best ways to run this offense is by constantly mixing up your runs to inside and outside so that your opponent never knows where the ball is going. So my opponent doesn't know what adjustments to make yet, and that's why he hasn't even closed up the defensive line. He knows that if he does that, it'll make it easier for me to run to the outside. On the next play, since I am still seeing those big gaps, I switch back to the zone weak, but I don't want to make the same motion with the tight end twice, as it will most likely tip the playoff if I use the same setup, causing him to play the run more aggressively from the safety spot. 
So I'm going to use another setup that he hasn't seen yet to maximize his look, this time by flipping the play into what looks like a dive and running away from the user once again. Since I've run the ball twice so far though, he will most likely be quicker to react to a handoff on the next play, so this time I'm going to make a fake motion design to put him in conflict by motioning out one of the receivers on the stack side of the formation. And you can see that it makes him hesitate long enough that I can get right through the lane for another big carry, taking him out of the play entirely. He still isn't closing up those gaps, so I'm going to continue to take what the defense gives me. Only this time I'm going to continue to run away from the user and the fake motion that I'm going to use is going to be the motion that I used on the first play to make him think that I'm going in that direction. He starts to play by getting closer to the box than he has in any of the previous plays, but once I make the same tight end motion, he reacts the way that I expected by getting closer to the line than even the linebackers. But the tight end motion brings across the outside defender, leaving nothing out here but one edge defender to contain me. He does cut off the run lane, but since there's nothing out here, I just take a wider angle for almost another first down run on the next play, I make no adjustments as all I really wanted was that one yard, and now I've run the ball on every single play. So since he has basically turned to another linebacker from the safety position, I think it's time to take a shot deep, which will either score or at least back him off. Either way, you have to mix it up as being unpredictable is also a huge advantage. And since he has run different cover three blitzes all game so far, I'm going to use the smash play I mentioned earlier as it can be a one play touchdown. All you have to do to set this one play touchdown is to motion out the tight end or the running back and put everyone on streaks but the corner route as his job is to pull the cornerback outside, leaving the X route open up the seam. And you can see that because of all the run plays, he barely moves at all, letting the streak get right behind him. But I either threw the ball too early, didn't pass lead inside enough, didn't save catch or all three as Watkins just drops it. So now that I have failed, I am behind the sticks with only two downs to get 10 yards and he is clearly in a bigger defense to try to stop these run plays and this is where I make my first bad read of the drive. You always have to take what defenses give you and against this defense the correct read is to try to run right through the middle as this defense has no second level defenders once you break through the six man defensive front. But for some reason I tried to run around it which is never what you want to do if your opponent has outside leverage which his defensive end has by about five yards making it almost impossible for the left tackle to get out and make this block but for some reason I thought I could either run around him or I was hoping that the receiver would pick him up <laughs> neither happened and I ended up making a crazy run just to get back to the line of scrimmage and pick up a few yards now in third and long I switch over to a pass play from another formation and run for the first down with Jalen Hurst before going back to the ball control offense he is still in the 4-3 even 6-1 so I make the right read this time and pick up four yards then on the next play he tries to shoot the gap that I was avoiding but I get around it safely behind my two tight ends to get another first down inside the 10 and I took up the entire first quarter in the process. At the start of the second quarter, he is once again a new defense as every defense he has tried so far has failed, but he is still in cover three, so I'm going to test that edge with the halfback stretch as he is now playing the middle high safety. So once again, once I see him motion over, I snap the ball for what I thought would be a walk-in touchdown before he stopped me just short. And now with nine men in the box, despite being on the short side of the field, we call the jet sweep, which completely confuses his user as we walk into the end zone for an easy score. On defense, I will once again be using my cover team man defense, but I'll be focusing on offense today. So if you guys want to see more about this, I will once again have a link in the description as well as a pop-up at the end of the video. So stick around for that. He starts the game by running the ball just like me as he probably thinks that he won't get the ball back if he doesn't get the first down. On the next play though, I forget to set my coaching adjustments and he makes me pay for it with a big read option run. So I make sure that once I get back to the huddle that I definitely set that to conservative. From here though, he doesn't get much as my coverage is his usual lockdown self before trying to run again nope. and getting nothing to get him into a quick third and 10. Only to go back to that read option play once again to find out that those adjustments are now set. He decides to go for it on fourth and 13 despite only really having one successful play on this drive and he should have just taken the points. How about new? Back on offense, he isn't respecting the pass at all and I have a ton of good pass plays in this formation so with under two minutes before half, I switch it up to another one play touchdown play in the PA fork, which can be a one play touchdown versus any defense in the game with a few different setups found in my eBooks. It looks like he is in man zero now, so all I have to do is fade the B route and both of these routes will get open if I have time. But he is all over them, so I wait to see which route he follows so I can throw to the other one, only to make a tightly contested catch to get me in a scoring range in one play. From here now, I have plenty of time to go back to running the ball, and now that he's in man zero blitz, you can see how the receivers pull back the cornerbacks, leaving me one-on-one -on -one with just the user keeping me from the end zone as I get inside the 10-yard line once again. Now that I only have one timeout left though, I can't keep running the ball, so I try a few pass plays, but I just don't trust it, and I want to guarantee a two-possession lead, so I throw the ball away, kick the field goal, take a 10-point lead in the half. Having only completed one pass play all game, but leading majorly in time of possession. He gets the ball to start of the second half, and his only offense has been Mahomes running, as nothing has really been getting open against my defense. He tries to force it to Kelsey on the next play, 
only to see Big Play Slay live up to his name once again as I tip the ball up in the air to myself. And we only got one man to beat as Mahomes is no match. And that is the game winner. See ya. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, I will have more videos about the defense that I was running and more plays from the Saints offense popping up on screen. So if you guys want to know more about that, just click the links on the screens. I'm sure it'll have a game. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. If you want to show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.